Water scarcity is one of the most pressing global challenges of the 21st century. As populations increase and climate change intensifies, many nations face the daunting task of securing reliable and sustainable water supplies. Among the nations that have successfully addressed this challenge, Israel stands as a global leader. Israel is a desert, and the country has faced a chronic shortage of water since its establishment in 1948. But in a remarkable turn of events, today Israel produces 20% more water than it needs. The country has not only solved its water crisis, but has also become an exporter of water technologies to other nations. To be able to do this, Israel embarked on one of the most ambitious water infrastructure projects in the world, and this project has become a symbol of innovation and resilience. Today, let's delve into Israel's incredible water highway, examining its history, design, challenges, and global impact. Don't forget to click on that subscribe button and like this video as it's the best way to support this channel. Believe it or not, Israel is using salty water from the Mediterranean to refill its natural biggest source of fresh water. The Sea of Galilee and the way it's been done is nothing short of incredible. The water is filtered in desalination plants across the coast of the Mediterranean and is then transported to the Sea of Galilee up in the north. Not only is it enough to solve Israel's water crisis, but it creates a surplus that allows them to give water to neighboring countries. To fully understand Israel's water innovation, it's important that we delve into its history. By the 1950s, water shortages in Israel had already reached critical levels, threatening the country's development and agriculture. The pressing need for water management became even more evident as waves of Jewish immigrants arrived, increasing the population and placing greater demands on the country's natural resources. The situation demanded immediate and innovative solutions. In 1937, a British engineer named Walter Clay Loudermilk proposed the idea of diverting water from the Jordan River and its tributaries in the north to the arid regions of the Negev Desert in the south. Although the project was put on hold due to the complexities of World War II and subsequent geopolitical tensions in the region, the concept laid the groundwork for what was to come. Following the declaration of Israel's independence in 1948, the young nation began to lay the foundations for a massive water infrastructure megaproject, the National Water Carrier, a plan that would transform the country's water landscape. Water was driven from the Sea of Galilee in the north, which is blessed with rain to the south of Israel, which has zero rainfall. Israel went into high debts just in order to pay for a huge project, but it was one that enabled life all over the country. The National Water Carrier is an engineering marvel, a 130-kilometer-long system of canals, tunnels, pipelines, reservoirs, and pumping stations that stretches from the Sea of Galilee in the north to the Negev Desert in the south. Construction was undertaken by Mekarat, the National Water Company of Israel. Work began in 1953, and the project involved some of the most complex and challenging civil engineering work of its time, including the construction of massive reservoirs and a network of pumps capable of moving water over significant elevations. One of the most notable aspects of the system is the main pipeline, a combination of above-ground canals and subterranean pipes that spans much of the country's length. The carrier begins at a pumping station near the Sea of Galilee, where water is drawn from the lake and then lifted over 200 meters above sea level using powerful pumps. From there, the water travels through a series of tunnels and canals, including the 17-kilometer-long Eshkol Tunnel, which was the longest water tunnel in the world when it was completed. The water passes through the Eshkol Reservoir, where it is treated and filtered to ensure its quality. From there, the water continues its journey southward, descending through the country's central plains until it reaches the Negev Desert. Along the way, the system incorporates various branch lines that deliver water to cities, towns, and agricultural settlements. The engineering complexity of the project also included considerations for maintaining the delicate ecological balance of the Sea of Galilee. The system was designed to extract water at a rate that would not deplete the lake's natural reserves. 
The project was completed in June 1964 at a cost of 420 million Israeli lira, or 112 million US dollars, which would be around 1.1 billion dollars today. When the national water carrier was inaugurated, 80% of its water was allocated to agriculture and 20% for drinking water. As time passed, increasing amounts were consumed as drinking water, and by the early 1990s, the national carrier was supplying half of the drinking water in Israel. Soon, the Sea of Galilee became a strategic source of water to Israel, supplying not only to the rest of Israel, but also to the Kingdom of Jordan. As part of the peace agreement between Israel and Jordan in 1994, Israel initially provided 25 million cubic meters of water to Jordan annually. Subsequently, in 2021, this amount was doubled to 50 million cubic meters of water. So in essence, Israel's Sea of Galilee provides Jordan with most of its water. Then, in 2017, after five years of drought, the water levels of Sea of Galilee decreased to historical low levels. The situation demanded immediate and innovative solutions, and it became clear that Israel had to adopt a comprehensive, multi-pronged approach to managing its water resources. Soon, Israel started developing desalination plants all along the Mediterranean coast. Desalination involves removing salts and minerals from seawater, converting it into fresh water suitable for drinking, agriculture, and industrial use. The roots of Israel's desalination efforts can be traced back to the 1960s, when researchers and engineers began to explore the potential of reverse osmosis technology. Over the decades, Israel refined this technology, making it more efficient and cost-effective. The breakthrough came in the early 2000s with the construction of the Ashkelon desalination plant, one of the largest in the world at the time of its completion. Today, Israel has several desalination plants located along its Mediterranean coast. Together, these plants produce approximately 600 million cubic meters of fresh water annually, which accounts for around 80% of Israel's domestic drinking water needs. In 2022, Israel did something remarkable. The country inaugurated an innovative project to pipe desalinated water into the Sea of Galilee in order to maintain the lake's water level during dry years. It was for the first time in the world that desalinated water was being used to replenish a lake. As part of the project, Makarot constructed a 13-kilometer-long underground pipe, connecting the lake to infrastructure that in turn links to five desalination plants on the Mediterranean coast. A second part of the project, to be completed in the coming years, will see additional desalinated water from new production plants, along with water from wells in the north, also directed into the Sea of Galilee. Israeli engineers realized it's not just about conserving available freshwater, but also taking advantage of water sources previously considered unusable. Apart from desalination, Israel has adopted other innovative technologies to provide water. Israel has developed one of the most advanced and comprehensive wastewater treatment systems in the world. Over 90% of Israel's wastewater is treated and reused, primarily for agricultural irrigation. A key component of Israel's wastewater recycling infrastructure is the Shafdan Wastewater Treatment Plant, located in the Dan region near Tel Aviv. The treated water is pumped to the Negev Desert, where it is used to irrigate crops allowing Israel to maintain its agricultural output, even in arid regions. Israel has also adopted a technology called drip irrigation, a method that slowly applies water directly to the roots of crops through a network of tubes, valves, and drippers. Because this delivery method avoids the full brunt of evaporation, plants absorb 95% of the water applied to them. With drip irrigation, less water could be allocated to farms without compromising agricultural output. Israel continues to improve the efficiencies, filtration, and production capacities of its water conservation portfolio with many upgraded technological systems and regional agreements. This distinguishes Israel's water conservation program from so many others. Israel's experience in solving its water crisis 
offers valuable insights for other nations grappling with water scarcity. Already Israeli companies like IDE Technologies, Netafim, and Mekorot have played a pivotal role in sharing their expertise globally, helping to address water scarcity in countries such as India, China, Australia, and the United States. Despite its successes, Israel still faces ongoing challenges related to water management. Climate change is expected to exacerbate water scarcity in the Middle East, leading to more frequent and severe droughts. Additionally, regional geopolitical tensions over shared water resources, such as the Jordan River, may complicate future water security. To address these challenges, Israel continues to invest in research and development, exploring new technologies such as solar power desalination, atmospheric water generation, and more efficient wastewater treatment methods.